So I am a critic of the current academic system and how it is set up. That, um, and I think it all has to do with just, you know, pure self-interest by human beings, right? We, we can, on one way, we can sort of think about the whole system as a sort of political structure where people are very self-interested to get ahead. And that's exactly what's, what's happening, right? That they don't sort of, people don't naturally look out for other people, and they don't want to encourage other people to to go and they're looking out for their own constituency and, and all of that kind of stuff where they are, you know, using political games. You know, it's like the, the tax system. I was thinking about that, um, that, you know, the tax system is is really quite simple. You just take money and you distribute it on things that are for public good, but the number of people that try to sort of cheat the tax system in various different ways is probably quite high. Um, I don't really care. And then the emotional reaction you get to is really quite high. And frankly, I don't really care about taxes that much. It's not a big part of my life. And um, I'm happy to pay taxes because I can see that there are roads being made and all sorts of different things. Um, but, you know, it still hurts, obviously, when you have to pay those taxes if it's a big tax bill. But it's not something I go out of my way to sort of cheat the system and do all of that sort of, you know, self-interested behavior. And the same thing happens in the academic game, in the academic arena, too, is that people don't you know, they, they sort of figure out ways to get around the system. The people are really smart. They're very intelligent. And, you know, they could do ex extraordinary things, except for there's a, a large class of individuals that, um, you know, they, they don't. They're sort of too, you know, I, I'm thinking about uh, PhD students in particular, I'm thinking about people that are in the sort of research game, is that they could choose to either play the, the system or they could choose not to, right? And, and there's a lot of people that become highly successful because they could play that system and they do really well. They understand that it is, a, um, you know, a political game, a strategic game, and they're sort of playing the system to get ahead and it looks really great. But then there's a lot of people that just don't want to do that and um, they choose not to do that. And, you know, what I found because I was in that sort of latter class, right? Like I still got it and I still understood the whole um, political system behind it and how outcomes are, you know, what's reward and all. I'm not, I mean, we're not really kind of silly, you know, we're not stupid to sort of realize how that works, but I just chose not to. And I chose to sort of just focus on doing good work. But that whole subclass, and that's huge. It's the majority of the people because, you know, only some people can actually sort of figure this stuff out um, and sort of quote unquote rise to the top. There's only a, a, a small group of people that kind of figure this out and, it, and it's set up in a competitive nature so you can compete and get ahead and get to the very top. Um, and then there's just this huge subclass. You can look at the number of people, it's pretty obvious when you start looking around, you start seeing like, hey, there's this like one-off author, for example, in a scientific article, where did that person go? Well, they disappeared or whatever, right? Um, and so there's this huge group of people that, you know, struggle with it. They don't necessarily understand what's going on. And, um, you know, and then we're faced on the other side that how do you actually change the system? Right. There is a lot of people that understand this and there's a lot of very well-intentioned people that understand this, that, um, you know, they're very smart. They realize that, man, it, it, this is this is a bizarre system. It's not necessarily set up in the way that it was intended to set up. Or maybe it is right. Like Maybe that's the goal um, is to do those particular things. Maybe that's what was intended. And um, but, you know. There's a lot of people that sort of don't want to go in and do all that kind of mess. And then they're sort of scrambling and stuck and they can't figure it out. Um, and so what do you do with that sort of group, right? On that 
one side is it's super easy. It's, you're just making investments in this uncertain asset if if you're sort of in, in on both sides, right? Like as as somebody that's getting hired on, um, you know, new to a, a, a university, that you're just investing in an uncertain asset that's going to cost a million dollars eventually. Um, because it's how much a professor will cost over the course of like five or six years, right? It'll be a lot of money. Um, and so it's a big investment. It's uncertain. You don't know if it's actually going to pan out. And it doesn't look like a good bet on the university side. And then as the, you know, students or people candidate side, they don't know what the heck that they're doing, but they, they are just making these uncertain uh, bets into publishing and different research, uh, different articles. They don't know if this is actually going to pan out and they sort of place these bets. They place these bets with the group that they work with. They place these bets with what article they're part of, you know, they're supervised, all these kind of things. And so they're just scrambling around in the dark. And we've got these two subsystems that are kind of working independently and they're not communicating with each other very well and they're sort of off on their own. Um, you know, they're they're not necessarily jiving completely, right? And they shouldn't because they're two different incentivized systems. Um, and so what do you do, right? So do we keep the system that we have that is really focused on rigor um, and, you know, in the, or do we change it to focus on rigor and it becomes like more difficult where it's even more difficult to actually get in. And, you know, the truth is to, to either get hired or, you know, to actually get a publication or get, you know, various different publications, whatever. Um, and the truth is, is neither of those things are really good options. The truth is, is, um, you know, you don't want to lower the standards of the the the, the journals, um, and universities are not going to change. the The competition's getting more and more um, rigorous. There's more universities coming online around the, the the world, and there's fewer spots. And if you sort of look at that market, we can simply you know throw up our hands and say, well, let's just do the competitive game and let the chips lie where they may and we're going to get to the top but then you know what if we sort of change the dynamic a little bit and this is what i've been thinking about and this is what the whole reciprocity project is really about is what if we just change the dynamic and what if i know me personally i can't sort of solve everything altogether right but what if in the little bits of time that I have, I just use something that's scalable, such as, you know, social media, such as, um, you know, quote unquote, social media, which I don't like that term at all. But, you know, this idea of using platforms to have a larger audience. Um, what if we used, created different tools to help us actually work better and more efficiently Right? And that's what the reciprocity platform actually is, is to allow us to work a lot more easily and get access to feedback and things like that. What if we just changed it? What if we had a different conversation? I'm not saying that this is, you know, I'm going to single-handedly change any of this kind of stuff. But no, I think that there's room for many people to sort of change this and say, hey, wait a minute, we don't have to play these games. We can encourage other people, and it seems crazy to do this in a public arena. And I know that I'm in competition with all of those folks, but I can still encourage them to get going. Um, and I can still, you know, and I don't feel good when when somebody gets a publication, and I don't, right? Like, I really, truly don't feel good about that. And what if we just change the dynamic and we just try to encourage people blanketly um, and, and I don't know who those people are, right? That, that's a different ball game that feels differently. And what if we had a platform that did this, right? That, that, that allowed us to, to work more efficiently. I don't know who those people are. And that's what the reciprocity platform is about. And I could see that, um, you know, this is making incremental changes, there are little bits that are changing and it is a 
you know, and it's this sort of slow, tedious process that I repeatedly talk about. But, you know, that this system as it, as it stands is not good. It doesn't function the way that it stands. Um, there's far too much, you know, wasted potential, wasted human capital, social capital, all that kind of stuff. But what if there was somebody who was, what if there was many people that we just choose to, and I'm not, I'm going to say that most people are not going to do this because this takes an unbelievable amount of work and it requires somebody that is probably a little bit more altruistic than other people. Um, but what if there was, you know, more people that just did this and was like, hey, you know what? You could do this. You can take those steps forward. Um, it's a simple process. You just got to make these sort of investments day in and day out and ignore all of the nonsense that happens. The political game is stupid. Um, it works. If you want to play the political game and, and the sort of strategic game, go nuts. It works. Uh, and, and the thing is, is when you're done, I don't know if you're going to feel good about yourself. Um, but, you know, for those of us that don't want to do that and go through all those steps, we need somebody that's a bug in their ear saying you're doing the right thing. And you just have to get up and, and try just a little bit. It takes a lot more work. Um, and it is a lot more difficult. But, you know, you could take these steps forward. And you could try and you could do that. And, yes, the system is messed up. The academic system is totally messed up. But um, what do we do? You can either get out of it, um, which I'm sure there's lots of people that don't want to do that. And if you want to do that, that's great. That's a big choice, but that's your choice. Um, but what if there's somebody that just repeatedly said, you're good enough. You're doing a good job. Just take those steps forward. You, need, you can actually do these things. One more day, one more step. And... You know, you do accomplish a lot when you do that. And you just say F you to the rest of the world and you just do your thing. I think that's it. I think that is, to be honest, I think that would help out tremendously. At least I'm building this for myself or something that didn't exist when I was going through all of this. And man, I could have used somebody that was just a pep talk that said, hey, you're doing the right thing. You're doing a good thing. Just keep going. And I need to hear that. I need to hear that from many different people. Um, and and what if that existed? And what if there was tools available that I was like, oh, man, I don't know what to do with this. And I could just turn to this tool and use the reciprocity platform. Right. And that's what I'm trying to do day in and day out. It's crazy and I'll get out. I know it. But that's what I'm trying to do. Anyways, take care and have a wonderful day.